The Ultramarines are really lame. I mean, they're not, they're fine, they're cool, but I feel like there's not a huge draw to the Ultramarines. They're the ones on the cover of the boxes. All Space Marines kind of start out as Ultramarines before they transition to something cooler. And that's not exactly fair, but it's kind of true. Ultramarines, they don't have a lot of the cool custom bits and extras and cool new units that the other Space Marines have. They're just kind of by the numbers. I can imagine a newbie who wants to play Space Marines asking around about what the different colors mean. And they ask about the Ultramarines. What do the blue ones do? Well, the blue ones are the Ultramarines. They follow the Codex Astartes to the letter. Ace warriors who are by the book, led by their Primarch, Rubute Gilliman, master in tactics, statecraft, and logistics. And then the Okay, cool, what do the red ones do? They fight good. Ooh, they do fight good. I wanna play the red ones. Like there's not a lot of oomph when it comes to the Ultramarines, but they are really cool, especially in 40K when they have so much lore and history surrounding them. I wanna to put together an Ultramarine, make him as cool as possible, just using this kit and a little bit of spare trash I have lying around. I don't wanna go find all sorts of extra cool bits. I want to kit bash this guy and make him absolutely resplendent. The Intercessor kit is one of my favorites. I have about 70 old squatty Space Marines and once these bad boys came out, I've never looked back. I love that Space Marines now tower over the other factions as they always should have. And although it takes a little longer to build these guys, I like how many pieces they come in. It allows more opportunity for interesting conversion. Each bolter comes with a little decoration on the side, but I have plans to add my own decoration. So I carve these off carefully with a fresh blade. Also, pro tip, change your blades often. Those things get dull fast. I have built the most bog standard basic Space Marine known to man. I didn't even use any of the extra decorations that come in the Intercessor kit. I find some of my best creative ideas come when I've got nothing, when my back is up against the wall and I just have to make it work. And speaking of making it work, this is an Ultramarine. What kind of base should he stand on? Yellow and red would look excellent. It's part of a color triad, but I'm thinking white, snowy white. The Ultramarines famously have the homeworld McCrag, a snowy planet that was ravaged by the Tyranid High Fleet Behemoth, my High Fleet. So I think some snow would look really good and help Ultramarines up this guy. I covered the base in a layer of cork. I love cork, it's the best material for making rocks. It just needs a little work so that it's not recognizable as office supplies. I trimmed it up and glued down my marine. I used to pin every space marine, which is super unnecessary. Space marines have some of the biggest feet in the biz. I stuck down a little more cork to give some variation in elevation and then tore up the cork so that there was no flat surfaces left. Now onto the purity seals. The plastic purity seals are okay, but they look a little chunky and you never get enough of them. So I wanna make my own. I took a soda can and cut it up to use the flat walls. I sandpapered off the plastic film on the front and inside and finished roughing it up with some fine grit sandpaper. I used my scissors to carefully cut a bunch of tiny little strips and I bent and twisted into my fingertips until it looked like the ancient parchment of the Space Marines. Then I started laying them onto my Marine. I made a wrap around the holy bolter, letting one strand hang down the side and I made two large tassels coming off of his thigh. And wanting to keep switching things up, on the other leg I made a wrap all the way around until it hangs down. The Ultramarines are very protective of these honor badges and consider it a virtue to return from battle with all of their purity seals perfectly intact. This one pop can will probably do about 50 Marines and I'm loving how the paper is looking. Now to do the wax seals. And the best thing I found for that is green stuff. To make these, I need just the tiniest little bit of green stuff. I mixed the two halves together and then tore off a tiny little bit and rolled it into a ball on my fingertips. It's too small to drip on the super glue, so I put a drop down and I used a toothpick to get it right where I needed it. And then I stuck on my ball. This little sculpting tool is perfect for picking up the green stuff and I pressed it flat using a popsicle stick. Then I could just squish it down with my little ball tool, but I found this little needle applicator tip, which does a really good job of sculpting the seal for me. Then all I had to do was rough up the sides and make it look a little more waxy. I made one on each parchment and I really like this method because I can have as many purity seals in whatever sizes and shapes I want. And they look a little more convincing than the plastic ones. For my next trick, I wanna make a Besigou, the little shield that protects the armpit. And the kit comes with a few, but they're typical shield shapes. The Ultramarines have a Roman aesthetic, so I want a nice round one. I took some normal plastic and roughed it up with some sandpaper and took a hole punch and made a perfect circle. I glued this down to the shoulder and it gives a much different look to the normal Space Marines and I think it'll fit the Ultra symbol perfectly. I love pouring some time into my little dudes because this is probably my 50th Intercessor, but because I just did a little something to him, a little conversion, I am pumped to paint this guy. 
Now to make them ultramarines. I primed him in black and then base coated him the only color possible, ultramarines blue. If I had one, I would have rattle canned the ultramarine blue. The extra tenacity of the rattle can primer would have helped keep the paint on the metal purity seals. Using the leftover ultramarine blue in my airbrush, I added a few drops of white paint and did a zenithal spraying this lighter color from above. I want to brighten this sucker up in preparation for the wash I'll eventually do. But after that, I have to lie down my base coats. I took white and black and mixed them together into a gray and put this on all the in-between parts of his armor and on his bolter. Then I used pure white for all his accents, like his knee pad, shoulder pad, and one thing I've wanted to mess around with, his elbow pads. These never get any attention, but I don't know why. They seem like the perfect spot to add more interest. Then I took the black paint and base coated his bolter. Retro Ultramarines have red and yellow bolters, but the modern Marines all have black on their weapons. Now I need to add a new color. Bone. This is the first warm color I'm using, but it's not going to be the last. Red, used sparingly on all the wax seals and on his eyeballs, or his eye lenses. Isn't it interesting that basically all 40k helmets have eye lenses instead of a visor or a slit? I guess it makes them look more like faces instead of helmets. Now that he's all base coated, it's time to fix up all my mistakes. I made myself a wash, watering down Null Oil 50-50 to make it not so dramatically dark. I slobbered this all over the marine, working quickly so I didn't get any coffee staining. I want crisp black lines in all the recesses. I now have a marine that is perfectly tabletop ready, slap a couple decals on there, call it a day, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Turn this guy ultra marine. First, his armor got a little dulled down by the wash. I want to bring it up and increase the blue saturation. I took a brighter blue and thinned it down, glazing it over top of the blue, hitting the highest points to brighten them up. And speaking of brightening things up, I went back to my red, adding a little bit of white, and did some spots all over the purity seals to give them a little glisten. Working my way all the way up to white, and while I had white on my paintbrush, I painted on a prayer on his bolter, making a lot of little scratches to show the microscopic lettering. I don't know what this bolter says, but I bet it's something dramatic. Or maybe it's just an office quote. Now onto his shoulders, and one thing I love doing on Space Marines is giving them a double line. Having the rim be one color and then adding an inner stripe of a different color, it adds a lot more detail than was originally there. I painted lines of yellow and then over top of that, a gold. And on his shoulder shield, I painted a border of black and then a border of yellow, finishing it up with some gold so that he has a little window on his armpit. That would be a great spot for a decal. I prepped all my spots with gloss paint, filling in any surface imperfections, and then I picked out my designs. I let those soak on my wet palette and used Microsole and Microset to get my decals just right, poking and prodding them into position before wicking away the moisture. The Ultramarines are very by the books. I never really put the class markings on my Marines, like Assault, Devastator, or Tactical, but it feels right on the Ultramarines. And of course, you gotta have as many Omegas as will fit. Decals just make me happy. I love applying them. It's a quick process. You slap it on, you kind of fudge it in a position, and then you take a damp paper towel and you just squeeze as hard as you can to get all the air out. And you're left with something better than you could ever freehand. But I do think I let this guy get just a little bit dark. But I think that's actually gonna help because it's gonna look really good if I push those highlights just a little bit brighter. I can never resist a good highlight. It's my favorite part of painting because it's quick and it dramatically changes the look of the miniature. I took my blue paint and added some white and took this color and did sort of an edge highlight here and there on any spots I wanted to draw a little extra attention. I did a scratchy, stipply brushing. I don't want him too clean. He's a battle-hardened space marine, so the crunchier the paint, the more textured he looks. I only put these highlights on about 5% of the model, but it boosts the whole appearance up a few notches, making him much more readable. And I almost forgot about his bolter. I dry brushed a little silver over the gray, giving it a little extra shine. Now that looks like an ultramarine who's ready to tag along with Captain Titus on a mission. Although even cooler than this space marine, have you heard about our Patreon? Over there we have a new set of terrain every month. This month is the Ruined Temple, a set of ancient blocks, ruined walls, and chaotic accessories, all perfectly modular, allowing you to build the ancient temple that is right for you. And if you always want to be up to date on what's happening at Yunza Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking one follower to receive the Age of Sigmar Dominion box and three followers to win this month's terrain. Follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Now it's time to tackle that base, and it's blue right now, but I don't think I need to base coat it. I think I can leave it blue, add a little bit more paint on top, and then sprinkle on the snow, and it'll look just right. I loaded up my dry brush with the original gray paint I started this whole project with, and then added a little more white paint to make the tips of my cork rock shine just a little bit brighter. I figured that the blue that's showing through in the cracks will just make the rocks look cold. Before I added my finishing touches, I sprayed my marine with Vallejo Satin Mecha Varnish. It is by far my favorite varnish, and I find it keeps my colors nice and doesn't dilute my metallics too much. Then I got my snow ready. I like Army Painter Snow. It starts out dry, and then you can add gloss varnish if you want wet looking snow, or like what I'm doing, you can add matte medium to get super cold dry snow. I mixed this up till it was about like toothpaste, and then took my least favorite brush and squished it all over the base. 
I'm going for a windswept mountain peak look, so I covered about 50% of the base. Although one day I'm gonna have to do a three feet of snow with a model just sinking into this stuff just to see what'll happen. I painted the rim of the base black and this little fella was finished. Whenever I get to paint one-off miniatures like this, I always like to do a little storytelling. This isn't just a box art ultramarine, this is a tyrannic war veteran on patrol in McCrag, making sure the Tyranid menace never returns. I love this guy, and now I get to add him to my collection of not Black Templar Space Marines. It's kind of growing and it's really fun to pretend it's like a what if. Well, what if I was an ultramarine player? What if I was a white scar player? Leave a comment below of what chapters you would like to see next because I am having a heck of a lot of fun painting colors other than black power armor. Thanks for watching.